So uh, again, thanks for being here. Uh, we're gonna get started. Uh, I'm gonna ask Julia to jump in and uh, take over the mic and talk a little bit about uh, Wrestle Like a Girl. Uh, welcome everybody. Thank you for hopping on today's webinar to learn more about high school women's wrestling in Nebraska. Um, like Jim mentioned, my name is Julia Salata and I'm the state sanctioning program manager for Wrestle Like a Girl. Um, so I'm overseeing all of the state sanctioning task forces in a number of different states, Nebraska included, of course. Um, and I also oversee our collegiate initiatives. So recently we kind of took the NCAA Emerging Sports Status Project under our umbrella. Um, we recently got that approved in Division One just last month, and Division Two and Three voted yes back in April. Um, wrestling a Girl is working on a number of things um, to advocate for women's wrestling at the youth level, high school, grassroots, even the international level. So um, just kind of promoting women's wrestling and, and pushing that forward. Um, I also wrestle for Team USA, and I also serve as the assistant coach at King University. So I have a lot of irons in the fires in uh, regards to women's wrestling. Um, I've been working with the Sanction Nebraska Task Force for a few months now. A uh, really great group of people trying to do a lot of great things and grow women's wrestling across the state. And I hope that you guys are all able to see the value of women's wrestling as well after we're done here. Um, so, yeah, so I'll pass it over to – back to you, Jim. Yeah. Um, thanks, Julia. Um, you know, how – how uh, our sport has kind of grown over the years and, and kind of that history. I, I think Iran can shed some light on uh, where we're at today with rules and, and the emerging sports status, as well as kind of how we've gotten there and the growth that we've seen. So Iran, if you could kind of take that over, that'd be great. Iran, you're still muted. He told us to mute and I forgot to unmute. Um, thanks for having me. Um, I want to give uh, everybody an update of where we are with regard to the NSAA and girls wrestling. Uh, at the last, um, well, it wasn't the last board meeting, we had one today, but in May we had a, a board meeting where our board of directors voted to, to grant girls wrestling an emerging sports status. Um, over the last couple of years, the representative assembly fell a little bit short of uh, passing enough votes to fully sanction it. And really, there's not a lot of difference between the two. Uh, I think this is a good path to take. The emerging sport opportunity that the board has given uh, allows schools uh, some leeway to build rosters and gain numbers with girls before we fully sanction a championship at the NSA level. Now, that being said, there are some uh, things that I want to make sure that everybody's aware of. When you uh, have or want to have girls wrestle, right now we just have wrestling. It's not boys wrestling, it's not girls wrestling, it's just wrestling. So any individual, whether it's a boy or a girl that wants to wrestle can still wrestle for your school. They just have to sign up for wrestling. Now, there are some intricacies with the weight management program that uh, requires uh, boys and girls to be um, measured differently and their weight loss program is a little bit different based on their body fat. However, uh, that's nothing new from what we've been doing in the past. What is new is uh, the amount of competitions that are becoming available to uh, give girls an opportunity to wrestle only other girls, which is the primary goal of, of Sanction Nebraska and, and the girls are the team that wants to sanction uh, Nebraska girls wrestling in Nebraska. So uh, that being said, we have a link on our website that is a fluid document that shows all of the competitions that people have let us know they're going to have this coming season. Now that is on the wrestling page and there's a girls uh, girls wrestling link and then on underneath that or tab and underneath that tab there's a link to that document. If there's anybody that wants to add to that document and have some competitions throughout the season, then you let me know and we can edit that document and update it and then it'll be immediately available for everybody. Um, that being said, one of the goals for the competitions is to spread them out a little bit so that they're not, number one, all on the same weekends, and number two, that the geography of those competitions is spread out too so that girls wrestling in the western part of the state have uh, opportunities like the girls on the eastern part. Uh, right now, primarily, the northeast part of the state is is really um, taking the bull by the horns and, and giving some opportunities to girls over the last couple of years. 
And our numbers have grown over the last couple of years and we're basing that on uh, alpha testing. Now there's girls on teams that don't go through the alpha testing, they're just on teams and they want to uh, be a part of the team and wrestle. Um, as we um, try to grow rosters, as the teams and member schools try to grow rosters, alpha testing is important because that's how we, we look at numbers. If the board of directors uh, is going to sanction uh, girls wrestling, then they're going to base it off of participation numbers. So the the object of the member school should be recruiting and getting girls out. And you can talk about that later. One of the things that are, are a few things within this emerging sports status that uh, they're able to do, boys and girls can wrestle um, in practice against each other if the school wishes. Um, that is something that was detailed in the proposal. And within that proposal, they can go to girls competitions and wrestle only girls if they want. They can actually practice with only girls if they want. If you have enough girls in your room and you want to do that, you can certainly as a local school district decide to do that and not allow the girls to wrestle the boys. That is a local decision. The emerging sports status and the, the details that went into that allow that. And throughout the season, girls have the option of wrestling boys or girls uh, when they go to competitions. And the reason that they want to do that is they don't want to limit uh, the opportunities the girls have to compete, period, whether it's against all girls or boys. Uh, my guess is majority of the girls, if not all of them, want to wrestle only girls. And so they're going to be looking for those competitions. And this status allows that to happen. So uh, with that being said, I want to get I can answer any questions that you have with regard to that. Uh, one thing that I would say is because they're a part of the boys team, uh, and this is one of the difference between a full sanction and the emerging sport. If schools want to co-op for girls teams, uh, they can co-op only on the, they would co-op with the boys. So that would change your enrollment number for the boys as well. The deadline for that is September 1st. You would have to make that determination prior to September 1st, but we don't allow through this process right now, we don't allow girls only to, to co-op with another school the way we do in other sports because they're actually a part of the men, the boys team. And I hope that makes sense. If not, feel free to let me know. Is there anything else that you want me to cover, Jim? Um, no, I think uh, you did a great job. I appreciate it, Ron. There'll probably be some questions uh, that come up as we go through this, and I know you'll jump in and, and tackle those. But I appreciate you being here and being that resource to answer those questions right away. So thank yeah. you. I, and I would say anybody that does have questions, if they, they don't just chat, go to the chat on this uh, Zoom call here and I'll answer any questions that might come up there as well. Thanks, Ron. Um, I'm not gonna sit here and, and try to tell you all the advantages of, of giving more opportunities to girls. I, I've heard a lot of great ones and I believe in those, but rather than me try to do that, um, I'm going to turn it over to some of the ladies that have, have been there and done that and uh, let them just kind of share their experience and introduce themselves and, and tell you kind of their quick story. So, Andrea, will you, will you start us off with that? You're still muted. Yeah, so my name is Andrea Yamamoto, and I competed for my high school back in 1986. Um, I then went on to have um, my first opportunities to compete against women with USA Wrestling and Team USA, and that was from um, about 1990, uh, 1990 to 1995. Um, I have coached uh, girls high school wrestling, and um, I've been a volunteer coach with Team USA. Um, worn a lot of different hats in the last couple of years. And, you know, just some reasons why uh, girls wrestling right now, um, you know, the biggest reason is that Wrestling is no longer a sport just for boys. Uh, that's true at the youth level, that's true at the college level, uh, and the senior Olympic level, and, and the high school space is where it hasn't quite caught up, but Joan will talk a little bit more about the data and the trends right now and how the last two to three years, the high school space is, is really growing in momentum with, with girls wrestling. Um, wrestling is a great no-cut winter sport. So when you look at what we're offering, you know, girls in the winter time, uh, this is another place for them to be able to participate in high school sports. Um, and it's also a great sport 
for every girl, whether she's 100 pounds, whether she's 190 pounds, there, there is a place for every girl in the sport of wrestling. Um, we're gonna have some other people talk about collegiate opportunities, but uh, there is higher education opportunities for girls right now to be able to get a college degree under the banner of wrestling, which is really exciting. But I think one of the things that's really critical, especially for um, athletic directors to be, um, uh, you know, have, you know, in their mind is that as we're talking about creating opportunities for girls in wrestling, we need to remember how much boys need to be able to compete against other boys in, in wrestling. It's a particularly burdensome sport uh, for boys to have to compete against girls in a contact combat sport in, uh, in a, the public high school environment. So as we start getting teams going for girls and get that competition going, that's how we're really taking care of our boys in this sport. It becomes a real win-win for everybody. And, um, and I think that that's, that's something that we need to keep in mind. Thank you, Andrea, appreciate it. Um, Joan, if I can put you on the spot, if you wanna just share a little bit of your story and your experiences, that would be great as well. Sure. Uh, very quickly, Joan Falk and Andrea and I have been working together for about four and a half, almost five years now. Uh, we work with uh, USA Wrestling, where they're a girls' high school development committee. We are complete volunteers, but we, for a long time, realized the girls' story needed to be looked at, told, and expanded at the high school level. So we're kind of the REI of girls' wrestling, where we developed uh, resources. Uh, participation data, uh, education co for coaches, information, guidance. We've been very fortunate to uh, two years uh, in a row, we worked with the NFHS providing information for all the executive directors on the growth nationwide of girls wrestling, as well as coming into the rules committee and helping them understand the models that were out there and how quickly girls wrestling was growing. So I'm gonna share my screen really quick and go through some data. Uh, this is just so exciting. Let me see. Here we go. Uh, high school participation data. We generally use the NFHS uh, participation data that comes out usually the end of August every year. Uh, we also use the National Wrestling Coaches Association's weight hydration numbers because there are still 12 states when we started, eight states now that do not separate the girls' numbers for the boys' numbers. But if you can take a look, from 2017 to now, to 2020, we know because we have those weight hydration numbers that girls wrestling has doubled. Almost 30% last year. Again, this year we're at 30%. Uh, probably those eight states that do not report uh, separate numbers represent about 1,600 additional girls off that uh, 2,800 number or 28,000 number we know we have this year. Uh, the next slide. Okay, Doki, let's see, here we go. Uh, 28 states strong. It took 20 years to have six states, and that was 1998 to 2015. 20 years to have six states hold an official girls championship. In the spring of 2018, more states started joining, and in the last two years, we are now 28 states strong. And we still have another state that's doing a voting process coming up this week, so we may, may be truly at 29 states. So that is an amazing amount of growth uh, that we've seen. And of course, we include Nebraska because you guys took that vote to uh, create an emerging sports status. The same thing as Arizona had emerging sports status, and then finally this year created their uh, official state championship and Colorado went through a two-year pilot program of which uh, this coming year they will have their uh, official state championship on that. Uh, the next slide, whoops, well, sorry about that. Uh, the next slide, oh, my, my, uh, my screen work is not, not working well here. Uh, what I want you to look at is, <laughs> <laughs> Here we go. Let's see what Joan has on that. Uh, my screen work. Oh, oh, got it, you guys. This is my first time doing this. I'm going to stop it here and just talk to you about it. Uh, data for uh, women's wrestling on the rise. States like Missouri, Kansas, Arizona. Missouri's numbers when they first started were 169. And that was the spring that they said yes to girls state championship their numbers the next fall went up to 910 and 
over 1,400 this year. We don't know if we'll ever see another state that increases their numbers quite that much, but huge numbers and an increase in their first year championship was in 219. Arizona, same thing. Numbers have increased in the last two years, up to 605 increase. Kansas numbers went up over 750. New Jersey started with only 124 girls, uh, said they were gonna say yes to a girls championship and their numbers this past year were 695. So we know that increase is there. Nebraska's numbers, uh, you guys in 2017-18 season had 85 girls. The next season went up to 112, then 186. So you've had an increase over the last uh, three years of 101 girls. So already we know that girls in Nebraska want to wrestle and those numbers are increasing right along with other states. Uh, and my last piece on this, ah, did you do that Taylor? No, nope. I am doing that. You are doing that. Bless your heart. Okay. Thank you. Cause mine was jumping all over. There we go. Let's, can we go back? Yeah. Here, so here's this, here's the, uh, <laughs> here's that slide. That, okay. There we go. There we go. That I was just talking about. I think one of the critical things here is to look at what's happening nationwide. And that is states are saying, yes, girls need the opportunity to wrestle their own gender. And if we look at the bottom of this, look at, Arkansas. Arkansas only had 44 girls wrestling, 58, and then they said yes to that championship, even though their numbers were low and their numbers increased by 121 to 165 this past year. Uh, Oklahoma, they were in the 80s for about three years, 84, 87, 85. This year they did an exhibition and they have already said yes to an official championship next year and their numbers jumped from 87 to 309. And at the very bottom, we have uh, one state, South Dakota, who I, I did not want to put them in the negative, but they just said yes, even though they only had 39 girls wrestling that went through their weight hydration this past year, they have said yes to that championship, understanding the importance of girls having the opportunity to compete and then buy for that state championship. And then the last slide I have very quickly, college opportunities are huge. Uh, we have now 85 colleges that offer girls wrestling. And I think the most important thing for, for myself here is that girls deserve the right to succeed at a higher level in sport. And we know that there are so many colleges now that they are looking for young ladies that want to wrestle. And maybe you have a young lady that's only wrestled one year, two years. They still have an opportunity. Those coaches are looking for these young ladies that are ready to expand their wrestling knowledge and come to college and, and participate. So NAI is now having their own uh, invitational championship. And of course, as Julia said, division one, two, and three approved this past spring. So uh, we have lots of slides and data and we can always share more of that, but I'm gonna give this back over to Ron and Taylor. Thank you, Taylor, for saving me on that uh, jumping around screen. Thank you. Thanks, Joan. Uh, sure. Great perspective on, on what's happening around us in some other states and, and uh, um, good segue into the college experience. I'm going to uh, ask Jeff to talk a little bit about uh, the opportunities that he's providing and, and kind of some uh, local college opportunities for kids. So, Jeff, take it on over. Thanks, Jim. Um, yeah, we, we started the program. This will be our third season coming up. Um, the first season we had seven wrestlers. Um, the, this last year we had 14, and this year coming up we're going to have uh, 23 on our team. So we're, we're making big strides. Um, you know, we started from you – know, we just had a men's program here. But, um, you know, I, I, I approached the, the school. and was like, hey, we need to get women's wrestling it's starting to grow. Um, and I, I told them that I would coach that. Um, we have a girl on here on this chat, uh, Autumn Brazen. She's a Nebraska girl, um, and uh, she she was a uh, uh, All American honorable mention uh, this year as a freshman for us. Um, so just great things are happening. I know Nebraska has some good female wrestlers around. I've seen them. Um, I've talked to them. We've got four on our team, um, and we're just trying to trying to grow programs. All over the nation is what we're trying to do, um, but yeah, um, you know, I take I take great pride in being part of this team. Um, 
you know, I get on the girls a lot about grades, which it pays off because um, all my girls are on an academic scholarship also as, long, as well as an athletic scholarship. Um, and that's big, that's big. Um, the ones coming in, there's a few that aren't on that, but at the end of the year, I hope we're all there again. Um, and we, we had the conference, uh, we had the uh, academic, for rest, girls wrestling, we had that for the conference. So the grade point, our grade point as a team was a uh, uh, three point four five. So we did really well this year. Awful proud of them. They wrestled really hard. In our third year, we had three girls mentioned for uh, all American. Uh, didn't get to have our season in the championship because of COVID, but we were right there and we were ready to compete. And it just got just at the wrong time. Just hit, but. There's a lot of opportunities and we do, you know, I talk to girls all over the nation. Um, so there's a lot of opportunities for girls right now in wrestling. Um, they're out there, they just need to open up and, um, you know, let us know that they're there and they want to compete in college is the big one. Contact coaches, so. Thank, um, thanks, Jeff, I appreciate that. Um, you mentioned Autumn, I see Autumn's on here. Uh, I'm going to maybe put her on the spot a little bit and see if uh, being a Nebraska girl, if uh, she could just talk a little bit about uh, some of the opportunities she's had and, and maybe uh, what her hopes are for, uh, for girls wrestling for Nebraska in the future. If you can hit your, there you go. All right. So I'm Autumn Branson and I've been wrestling since I was about a third grader and Growing up, I was stuck always wrestling the boys because around February, as like we didn't have any girl wrestlers, I would have to go down to Kansas to see any girl wrestlers. And as I went through high school, I got to see just the girl wrestling to slowly get bigger and bigger. By the time my sophomore year of high school came, there was lots of girl tournaments for me to go to, but... I would have to compete during our off season for high school because I was still wrestling the boys team. I couldn't go back and forth because then I'd have to sit out for the boys varsity meets. But I'm really hoping that it does kind of have like, it does get separated because I've seen a lot of like younger elementary girls just slowly come up and it'd be nice to have them have their own place, their own state to have. And just to know that the fact that I'm helping push this little motion is wonderful. And for wrestling, for me, it, it's helping me get an education to get a better career and succeed in life. And that's what I'm hoping a lot of these girls will have as the state will sanction them. Awesome. Thanks, Autumn. Appreciate you sharing that. Um, you know, we could probably sit around and, and I know there's some other gals that could jump on and share, share personal stories and, and things that they've taken. And, and I appreciate all of those. Um, you know, I just, just being on the AD side, you know, there's some things that I had three boys, no girls, but I know uh, some of the lessons that, that my kids and, and uh, young men that have been on my team have, have taken from wrestling. And I, I'm passionate about it, as I know all of you are as well. But uh, as I sit here and I think about, you know, why not have those same opportunities for young ladies? Um, because I think those things are very important for them and building that confidence and, and all of those things. So uh, in whether it's, it's the Title IX issue or not, I, I, sometimes I think it's more about the opportunities and, and giving those uh, girls that want to compete that chance to do that. So <clears throat> kind of a call to action to see if we can keep this thing moving and, and increase those opportunities for, for the gals. So um, thank you ladies for sharing that. Um, one of the things I know sitting in the AD chair, it, it, many times it's about money and that's a question that comes up and that's something we have to defend. Um, you know, fortunately, uh, some districts do that easier than others, but uh, budget is always a concern, and I think it's still even more so a concern right now. But um, I'm going to let Ron Alexander talk a little bit about, uh, you know, budget approach and, and different ways of doing those things. So, Ron, I'm turning it over to you. 
All right, I'm Ron Alexander, the Principal and Athletic Director at Platte View High School. And I just wanted to speak a little bit from the building level of how there could be a variety of approaches to growing uh, girls wrestling and opportunities for girls in our state. And I'd like to start with uh, just taking, tipping my hat to the Board of Directors because uh, how they've approached this is really uh, thoughtful. Uh, gives a lot of local control, which I think is critical because it scares a uh, local AD sometimes of how do I put this together. And, and, and I work with a lot of ADs across the state and just I'm seeing a, a million approaches that all are okay. Uh, some may not have any girls that are in, interested initially. And maybe your approach to the first year is taking a couple girls that are peeking around the corner looking at girls wrestling to see, is this for me? Maybe you just get in a van and you take those couple girls to a tournament and just let them see what it's about. That might spur year two where maybe they uh, do the alpha testing and they start participating. Maybe your program is, uh, has two or three wrestlers, not enough to hire a coaching staff that they can join in the same room with the boys and you, you take them to some girls tournaments, maybe let them do some, boy That's, that approach is fine too. There is no, no two schools should look the same. Uh, we're we're fortunate. We we have about 16 to 18 girls with I think more coming, and so we made the decision we want a separate girl staff. Uh, so our budget's probably in the 15 to 18 thousand dollar range just because of new singlets, the head coach, assistant coach salaries, and travel. Uh, and whether we have the separate uh, 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 coaches or not, that's kind of a local uh, decision for you because we probably could have uh, gotten by with. Uh, the boys coach boys coaches go ahead and doing it uh, that probably would have worked and in some situations maybe that's a better approach to depending on your facility for us we wanted to assure that there's a separate space and a, a separate focus for those girls that never do we have to wonder who's going to take who to an event we have a dedicated staff that's looking out after their interests and so we're excited about that but not everybody's at that stage ray might have a uh, a team double our size that maybe he has to look, approach it as a whole different uh, approach where he has to say, I need separate times in our, in our wrestling room to be able to pull off practices because we have so many people. So you're going to have one end of the spectrum to the other. And that's all okay because every little bit for every school in Nebraska that's committed to whether you're taking some girls to it or you have a full team in your own space, it's, it's, building that momentum for one day these girls can wrestle at a state championship and call their own. And when that day is, I think we all have a role in that. And when that interest comes at your local level, that it's, you'll see. And, and I think the thing that's good about Nebraska is, is we're going to grow it and, and nurture it. And I think we're going to do a great job. So I just, it, the budget could be very minimal and it could go up to, if you have a full squad where you have separate spaces, maybe it's still the same room. But you might approach that eighteen, twenty thousand dollars on a high end. But I think it's money well, well earned or, or well spent. So that I just wanted to share that as we uh, look at. I know some ads are going. Well, I don't know if I have any girls interested. That's okay. That will come. Yeah. So thank. Thanks, Ron. Um, I, I just from the ad perspective too. I would just jump in and say, you know, we we had about twelve girls participated this year. And, you know, we, we really did it with no added cost other than entry fees for, for our tournaments. We did not add coaches. Um, you know, we've done that on, the, on the, the cheaper side from that standpoint, just to see the interest. And we know we're going to have interest. Um, but I think that's the things that ADs need to hear is and to start this, to recruit, to take on a couple athletes, it's really going to be done at little to no cost. And then you can see if there's interest there. And I think what we're going to find is there's probably a lot more interest than we ever thought there was. And what a great opportunity for those girls that um, would have not had that opportunity otherwise. Um, Ray's on here, and, and I'm, uh, I'm going to go off script a little bit, but I'm going to ask him to jump in because – um, he's got probably the biggest program in Nebraska uh, in terms of number of, of athletes and, and, you know, maybe talk about how it started, Ray, and, and you know, kind of how you got to where you are today. Yeah, I'm Ray Maxwell with uh, West Point Beamer. 
public school and uh, we just basically started by a survey or announcements in the school to have any girls that were interested in wrestling to come down to a room and uh, basically explain the sport and uh, we started with uh, eight girls came to the meeting six came out and we grew six the next year was 12 then 22 we had 22 again this year um, but it is it is just kind of mushroomed on its own it's given girls their own space we have a uh, a large hispanic population in the, our school and there are girls that of that uh, ethnicity that do, do not like to play basketball so wrestling is something that they love to do and uh, i think this year i had four girls who were non-hispanic the rest were hispanic girls and uh we've had a great increase because of that. It's given those girls something to do. Um, they become involved in the school. It boosts school spirit. Um, and it's it just something that everybody talks about and, and it's just kind of mushrooming and growing on its own. Thanks, Ray. Um, the, other thing, the other thing that has not been mentioned that um, I didn't really realize until, you know, we got a couple years in, um, when you have a, uh, a boys duel or a, a tournament you get the the diehard wrestling parents and fans that are there uh it seems like when young ladies um you know we did a, had an opportunity to do a duel against uh west point and and uh it's it's an event that the whole fam not just the immediate family but you've got grandma and grandpa there you've got aunts and uncles and some of that is culture but some of that is just the excitement and, and uh, folks wanting to show support for these young ladies who are, are you know, putting themselves out there and trying something new. And, and uh, that, that builds a really neat culture. And I think those are some of the offshoot things that we don't even think about uh, when you're starting to look at dollars and whether we can do this or not. But I think those are the great byproducts of, of when you just uh, give that opportunity and, and say, we're going to try this and see where it takes us. So uh, that's something I didn't even realize until, you know, we've gotten to where we are. So, um, you know, um, I, I think it's a lot of great uh, comments. Um, you know, I'm going to circle back uh, in case there's any, um, I don't think I saw any questions in the chat uh, about how this season would look, but I just guess I'm just going to open that up one more time. Uh, if someone has some specific questions for Ron uh, or or for anyone that that you know you heard today, if you want to hear a little more, uh, jump in and and uh, either throw that out there in the chat or or uh, unmute yourself and ask the question. So I'm going to pause a little bit. Jim, while you, while you do that, there was a couple of things that I wanted to make sure that everybody's aware of. Uh, when you talk about sending uh, other people other than your head coach with uh, the girls that maybe go to a different competition than the boys, that person needs to be a certified coach. Uh, but the process for certification in Nebraska is relatively easy. Uh, it is available. The process itself, the list of things that are required, is available on our website under, under the coaches tab. And then there's uh, some things that you have to do with the NDE. Now we learned today that the NDE certification program switched over to something new, some sort of new software, and they're logged, they're backlogged a little bit. So if you don't get that right away, don't panic. Um, I would talk to your administration. There's a, there's a method that you can go on. Uh, I think the superintendent, she said today, would be the one that would go to the Department of Ed and go to their login and request a priority. And then they would probably grant, uh, I think it was called a temporary or, um, I, don't, I don't remember what the word was, but a, a conditional. That's what it was, a conditional approval so that, before, so that they can get to all the, log, the paperwork and get the backlog taken care of. But that would be something that you, as a, an administrator, would need to make sure if you're sending your girls to a different competition than your boys, that the person taking them is a certified person. Good point, Ron. Um, Jeff just put a, a little note in the chat. Um, York College is interested in hosting a girls tournament. Um, you know, I, I just want to put a plug in for Ron again, because um, he's gone out there and, and put together 
uh, a link that's on uh, the wrestling page on the NSAA that has uh, all the girls events that are going to happen next year. And um, if you're an AD that's considering this and you're saying, well, I don't know where our girls would compete, uh, jump on there and you can see there's going to be a handful of tournaments that are going to be close to you and you can participate in as many of those as, as you want and travel as far as you want. So uh, I think that's been a great start to kind of help us spread that out across the state so we don't have three tournaments on the same day in a 30 mile radius. So uh, thanks Ron for doing that. Um, let me see. Anyone else have some other questions here? Hey, Ron, I got a question for you. Um, has the NSA decided how many girls it would take for it to officially get a state tournament, or is that kind of just see as, as it goes here? Uh, at the board meetings, that we have not talked numbers. The board hasn't talked about specific numbers. Uh, it's different when you talk about teams and you talk about individuals. Uh, I'll give an example. Like when we had it, um, unified bowling, the goal was to have 40 schools before we had a championship. Well, in wrestling, one school having a, having a participant constitutes a team. So just having 40 schools have wrestling doesn't necessarily mean you have enough numbers to have a championship. I don't know that they, they in their mind, even know what, what that number would be. But I think that the number that we have now would need to grow in order for them to consider it. Um, but I don't know if that number needs to grow, double or grow significantly. And I don't know what, in their mind, what that would be, but um, they're watching closely. And I, I would say that our board is, is not against it, but I think that they wanted to make sure uh, to be prudent and make sure that the, the want and need was there to have another championship at the NSA level. Thanks. Um, just a couple things and, and uh, we'll circle back to any final questions, but um, this is the first of, of uh, three meetings uh, tomorrow. Uh, if you want to hop on the same uh, uh, email that, will, that went out uh, tomorrow, there's a parent athlete meeting, or excuse me, uh, tomorrow's a coaches meeting, seven o'clock. Um, for some of those coaches questions that, that uh, maybe are, are more directed uh, for how you uh, coach this type of team and, and get that ball rolling. And then on Wednesday is the parent athlete uh, meeting at seven o'clock as well. Uh, you can circle back to these same meetings and if you wish, or, you know, the other thing I would say is uh, ADs talk to your coaches. They receive that email, uh, ask them to jump on and, and uh, there'll be some other things discussed in those meetings that we didn't talk about tonight. Um, parents, uh, if you have some athletes that are uh, even just curious, um, have them uh, jump on that as well. And uh, we've got a lot of uh, great resources, I think, within our state. Um, you know, I would be remiss if I didn't uh, thank um, all the, uh, the folks from Russell Like a Girl organization, uh, because they have uh, been tremendous. I mean, anything that, any questions that we've had, they've answered or they've found someone to answer them. Uh, they've provided us with resources and, and um, you know, so many other states have gone through this already that um, we can kind of glean from them what's worked well for, for other states. And, and I just feel like we're in a really great place. Um, and it's nothing that uh, any one of us have done, but I think a group of people working together with a common goal. And uh, I'm excited. I'm excited where this can go. And, uh, you know, I guess uh, uh, we'll see here. COVID or not, we're going to move forward and make this happen. So any uh, uh, final things there? If not, thanks, everybody, for joining us. Uh, appreciate the time. And uh, jump on those other meetings uh, if, if you wish. Thanks again, and have a good night. Thank you, Jim. Good night. Great to be here with Nebraska. You guys have got a great support team. It's exciting to watch the growth. Thanks, Ron. 
Yeah, I, I push record. I'll try to get a link that we can put up and make available. Um, cool. We'll put it on our website in case people go there and you'll probably have it on yours as well. All right. So I do have one question. Um, do you want to stop recording? That's what I'm asking. <laughs> Where did I do that? <laughs> Dave, let me call you right back. Okay.